cross if you know what you're you know me i say if we can begin on time we can end on time so i would like to say good evening and welcome everybody uh we have gathered tonight to address the need for healing in america and the world 2020 has been and continues to be a very problematic year inundated by pandemics such as economic turmoil political chaos racial divide COVID-19 and more, resulting in human suffering all over the world. However, the people of God believe in the power of spiritual healing. So hopefully the panel of clergy we have assembled for this forum will take us on a healing journey, helping us to remember that out of chaos, we can have order. Out of sorrow, we can have joy. Out of darkness, we can have light. So I encourage you to sit back, relax, and prepare to board this ship called Hope, which mm -hmm. has been designed to take us to the waters known as healing streams. So at this time, I'm going to, I have the pleasure of introducing to you the moderator for this evening, and that's no one other than uh, Elder Claude Oliver, uh, Pastor of faith, uh, greater faith, um, let me get it right. Greater faith, pastor of faith, and greater faith and deliverance ministries in Binghamton, New York. And uh, as I always introduce Reverend Oliver, he's an energetic soul. So if you want your ship to sail well, <laughs> I'm on board. So this time, I'd like to present to you and introduce to others uh, Elder Claude Oliver, uh, pastor of uh, greater faith and deliverance ministries in Binghamton, New York. Reverend Oliver. Thank, thank you so much, President Bernier. It is certainly always a delight for me to join the NAACP in meetings like this and the various things that they host uh, to make our community better. And with that, we are not going to prolong the time, but we're talking about a time of healing. And we've got a, assembled an esteemed list of panelists that are going to share with us uh, uh, their perspectives on healing and how do we get there? Uh, certainly our nation is in an uproar, certainly, uh, this is the first time I've ever lived through a pandemic. We've got a lot to cover tonight, so we're going to jump right into it. Uh, we're going to start tonight off with an opening prayer by Reverend Jane Winters, the pastor retired, retired Presbyterian pastor in Elmira, New York. Excuse me, that's retired Presbyterian pastor here in Elmira, New York, followed by an election year uh, update by Dr. Jimmy Williams, who's the first vice president of the NAACP Elmira Corning branch. And he will be followed by greetings from the Honorable William Bolin, mayor of Corning, New York. Let's go in that order as we start tonight. Let us consecrate this time together with prayer. God of grace and God of glory, Lord of love and harbinger of hope. We come before you this evening with thankful hearts for these servants who are willing to share their faith in you. Anoint these speakers through the power of the Holy Spirit that they might bring hope and inspiration to our often weary souls. In the precious name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. I'm hoping it's weary. Dr. Williams? I think you may be on mute, sir. Good evening. I'm Jimmy Williams, first vice president of the Elmira Corning branch NAACP. And I will be giving you an update of our election process. This is our election year. Uh, there are three parts to our election process. <laughs> We're going to ask if our, if our logistical person could mute all the lines, and that way we can proceed. Oh, Go right ahead, Dr. Okay. Williams. Okay, there are three parts to Dr. Jimmy, you're muted. You've muted everybody now. Okay. We'll get it right this time. All right. Uh, 
This is the third part of our election process. There are three parts. September meeting was the uh, selection of our nominating committee responsible for soliciting and, uh, and uh, reporting in on the candidates for officer and the uh, and members of the executive committee. Uh, our November, our October meeting, uh, the nominating committee uh, reported on, this, on the slate of candidates for office and the membership of the executive committee. Uh, uh, committee. Um, and then at that meeting in October was the selection of the election supervisory committee. And the person that's responsible for that took on the role as president is Dr. Gregory Williams, uh, known to many if at the Friendship Baptist Church as uh, Deacon Williams. Uh, so this is November, the uh, third part of our election process. The actual election has been held and the election supervisory committee will report on the results. And I would also like to thank uh, Mr. Ivan Jubilee for providing us with the survey monkey uh, for actually uh, for the voting to actually happen. And I'll yield and let Dr. Gregory Williams uh, give us the election results. Good evening, everyone. Uh, good to see everyone here. And it's been quite a, an honor to participate in this uh, historic event here of, of selecting the officers again for the NAACP. Uh, the uh, election committee worked very uh, together to come up with the slate and the nominating committee came up with the slate and the supervisory uh, uh, election committee uh, came up with, uh, with the process. And we have actually uh, looked at the votes. The votes have been cast and uh, we will have our new members. So uh, very quickly here, um, I wanna pull up something so I can make sure that I have it all correctly done. Uh, the ballots were cast and the uh, persons who were nominated, we have the uh, president is uh, George Verdier. Uh, first Vice President, Jimmy Williams. Uh, the Treasurer is not Field. The Secretary is Paulette Daniel Hill. And then we had to vote on the Executive Committee, committee members. And they are Janice Bailey, Ruben Bailey, Susa Ellison, Michelle Boris, Olivia J. Kristen, Tanya S. McGee, Holly Strickland, and Astra Titus. So uh, each of these candidates were on the ballot. Ballots were cast and they were unanimously voted in uh, for those positions. So this is the slate of candidates that were given. And these would be the officers for uh, 20, 21 for the NACP uh, and my recording chapter. That's the report. Thank you, Greg. And we'd like to give a nice congratulation to all those who ran for office and the executive committee membership. Thank you. Jimmy, maybe we should take a, a mo uh, do a vote on, on a motion for that. Um, so let's carry through a motion to make sure we're legal. <laughs> Great. All right. So you've heard the list of candidates, and we uh, would like to uh, have a motion that these candidates be accepted as the elected officers for 2021 for NAACP of uh, the Corning and Meyer branch. So moved. I need a second. second. It has been moved and properly second that uh, we receive this slate of officers as uh, reported out uh, by uh, Mr. Williams. Um, any questions? Hearing none, all in favor, let it be known by saying aye. 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 Opposed aye. us? Carried. Thank you so much. Back to you. Thank you so much, uh, President Verdier, and for 
those officers for executing that uh, process. We certainly appreciate you and the work that you continue to do in the Elmira Corning branch of the NAACP. We're gonna now hear from Mayor William Bolin, the mayor of Corning, New York, with greetings. Mayor Bolin. Thank you, Reverend. Given the season of spirit that we are entering in, it is fitting to come together this evening to explore and foster healing. I thank you for inviting me and on behalf of the people of Corning and the Corning City Council, I bring greetings to your undertaking. We do indeed need healing, physical healing, social healing, political healing, and spiritual healing. Physically, we need to embrace all that we know about conquering the pandemic. Though there are vaccines that promise a brighter day, by many accounts, we will be in for a long winter with this virus. While we seek to heal our hearts of all the suffering borne by so many, we can provide for each other by following the basic health guidelines that are now well known to us. Frequent washing of hands, wearing a face covering, social distancing, and avoiding unnecessary gatherings or travel. And we can entreat God to heal those who are ill and in danger. For the safety of us all, our prayers are needed. Socially, our nation remains in an unsettled place. In America today, we suffer from a crisis of disconnection. The collective sense of our common purpose seems to be stripped away. We are challenged to be faithful to our deeper human values, to love and be loved, to family and community. We see each other as different, so we make ourselves different. And in that difference, we isolate ourselves and we divide ourselves. We do not have peace. To a great extent, we share a certain loneliness. But at heart, with renewed compassion, love, empathy, and tolerance that is within us all to bring out and rise up, I believe we will reconnect. But to heal, we need to do the hard work of understanding each other, of opening up our hearts to embrace difference and to together claim our beautiful shared humanity. Mm -hmm. For understanding, reconciliation and healing, our prayers are needed. I will not delve into politics here, but only to say that many of us are by now over politicized and even at the expense of our moral commitments to the common good. The recent election laid bare the deep divisions which exist politically. Once again, our differences serve to divide us, not to strengthen us, not to deepen us. As we encounter the change which the people decided, we have an opportunity to heal, but heal through doing the hard work of embracing those things which unite us. That's a place to build from and an opportunity to heal. For this and other matters, our prayers are needed. And as far as spiritual healing, well, I've come to listen to you this evening. And I look forward to listening and being inspired to heal. Thank you once again for the opportunity to be with you. Thank, Reverend thank you so much. Reverend yeah. Oliver, may, may I interrupt for just a moment? We had invited yeah. Mayor, um, Mandel, but he was unable to make it tonight. So I see Senator O'Mara on, and if he doesn't mind, maybe he could just give a, a brief greeting. Um, then you can roll with the program. Certainly. Senator O'Mara, go, go right ahead. Oh, good evening. Uh, and thank you. I read about the, uh, uh, the meeting in the paper over the weekend, so uh, I'm glad I have time uh, to sit uh, and listen this morning, uh, this evening with all of you. Uh, I'm happy to be here and to, you know, to, to, uh, uh, to follow up on uh, Mayor Boland's words. Uh, you know, I'm here to listen. Uh, I'm here uh, to reach out, uh, to offer whatever I can do uh, to help with uh, the divisiveness uh, in our communities. Uh, and, you know, I, I firmly believe that uh, uh, America is strongest uh, because of our diversity and our differences. Uh, that has made up uh, our country uh, since, its found, since its founding. Uh, and we have grown and developed since then. We certainly have uh, a long ways to go. Uh, 
Um, uh, there is a lot of animosity, a lot of division out there. Uh, and I uh, just want to uh, offer uh, whatever I can add uh, to help um, bring people together uh, in our community uh, from, uh, from all aspects. So uh, I'm happy to be here tonight. And thank you for giving me an opportunity to, to say a few words, Georgia. Thank you so much, Senator uh, O'Mara. We certainly appreciate you uh, being with us and we hope that you can stay with us for the rest of the evening. We are ready now to hear from what I think are world-class presenters, speakers, and preachers around the subject of healing. Certainly this is a time to heal. And I wanna start with some comments before I introduce this panel and then we'll have each of them to speak for four to five minutes about their perspective around spiritual healing. For those who may be on the line tonight and uh, think that they're not going to church, you may want to get off now because you're going to church tonight. It is so important that we pinpoint why we're here and why we've gathered. We're here and we've gathered to talk about spiritual healing. And that type of healing takes place best when we embrace a spiritual, our spirituality and the thing that we believe in the higher power, I call it God Almighty. Today our land is in need of healing and families are being torn apart. There's violence, godliness, and immoral Im immorality everywhere. But the Bible teaches that God is not waiting for the world to change. Mm. This is what the scripture says in Chronicles 7 and 14 from the King James Version of my Bible. It says, if my people who are called by my name would humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sins and heal the land. He's looking for not the unbeliever, but for his people. He's looking for you and I and those who claim him as Lord, Savior, and King. What we do will determine if he will hear, forgive, and heal. You play, and that's each one of us, you play an important role in the healing now. Humble yourselves, pray, seek God's face, seek his kingdom first. Turn away from your sins and wickedness in your life. If all of us do this, God promises to heal from heaven, that we would hear the promises of heaven. He would forgive our sins and he would heal our land. I'm encouraging us all to be the church and don't allow your politics to overshadow your purpose and the cause of Christ. We love in spite of, we must be who Christ has called us to be, regardless of who's in the White House, or who's in the state house. Tonight, we have an esteemed panel to talk to us and give us some perspective on healing. We have tonight, the Reverend Lori Thornton, pastor of the Friendship Baptist Church, Corning, New York. The pastor, Reverend Kale Mann, the pastor of the Faith Temple Community Church of God in Christ here in the city of Elmira. The Reverend Nathaniel Wright, pastor of the Calvary Baptist Church, Ithaca, New York. We have the Reverend Gerald Glover, the pastor of the Rever Resurrection Tabernacle here in the city of Elmira, New York. The Reverend Constance Seifert, the pastor of the First United Methodist Church, Corning, New York. And the Reverend Holly Strickland, pastor of the Webb Mills United UMC in Pine City, New York. We're hoping that Pastor Corey Cook will also be joining us tonight, the pastor of the Monumental Baptist Church. We're gonna start with Pastor Thornton and have each of our panelists to speak for four or five minutes. And then we will uh, come in with some questions and some interchange and dialogue. Pastor Thornton. Good evening, everyone. First of all, let me take an opportunity to say thank you to the NAACP uh, committee who um, thought enough of me to ask me to speak tonight. And um, I'm just excited to be here. And I'll have to say, Pastor Oliver, I smile when you started saying that scripture 
Second Chronicles 7, uh, 14 and 15. I don't know if there's a preacher on here tonight that hasn't already consulted that scripture. Um, but I, I do wanna take just a few moments um, to, to speak on healing. Um, and first of all, uh, secondly, good evening to everyone else that I didn't say good evening to, to all of the other fellow co-laborers in the gospel, to the city officials and everyone on tonight. Good evening. Let me spend just a few minutes talking about healing. When we rolled into 2020, we came into 2020 with excitement. I think a lot of churches had their, their uh, year's theme as the perfect vision or 2020 site or something like that. And I can tell you 2020 did not fail us in that effect. It did reveal some things. It revealed hurt, it revealed pain, it revealed some cracks. When the pandemic came along, it revealed so many more things. So 2020 really has been a year of perfect vision and showing us things that we would not seen before or that we would seen and overlooked. We are at a place now where we need healing from so many things, healing from the effects of this pandemic, healing from financial pains, emotional pains, mental pains, spiritual burdens, social injustice, blatant racism, all of those things that we deal with in our daily lives. We just need to be healed. And where does healing come from? I think there's not a pastor or a preacher on here that won't tell you that healing comes directly from God. It comes from your connection with him. It comes not just from knowing a textbook definition of who he is, but it comes from a personal walk with him and accepting his son as your savior. I want to uh, focus on that verse that uh, Pastor Oliver just talked about. If my people who are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and I will forgive their sin and heal the land. But the scripture that follows that says, now my eyes will be open and my ears attentive to prayers offered in this place. This uh, particular scripture is a response to a prayer that King Solomon prayed in chapter six. He said in chapter six, when the people disobey, and if they do this, God hear from them. When the people turn their backs on you, and if they do this, God hear from them. So King Solomon prays this prayer in chapter six, and this is God's response to him in chapter seven. And it's also God's response to us tonight. There are some things we've just got to do for healing. First of all, we've got to acknowledge that we're hurt because if we never acknowledge that we're hurt and where the hurt's coming from, how on earth can we ever ask to be healed or, or look for healing? But in order to be healed, he says, you have to humble yourself. 2020 has found too many arrogant people. He says, you need to humble yourself. You need to remain prayerful. That means pray in and out of season, pray on a good day and pray on a bad day. It says, seek my face, seek the face of God, uh, not man's approval, uh, not your friend's approval, but seek the face of God, because that's where you'll find your healing. You need to turn and repent. This scripture is telling us that there is action that's required for us to be healed. You've got to humble yourself, remain prayerful, seek the face of God, turn or repent, because action is required. Then he says, I will forgive and heal the land. And notice how he puts it first. God says, I will heal you first because forgiving you without a healing, you're incomplete. He wants to heal you and make you whole. He doesn't just want to fix the issue that you're in. He wants to take care of your whole life. There was the man laying at the pool, at the pool of Bethesda. Jesus didn't ask him if he wanted to be healed. Will thou be made whole? He wants to make us whole. I don't wanna just be healed. I want to see the community made whole. And that can happen when we all connect with Christ. We being the believers of God, we being the baptized believers of God, not the world. He's not looking for the world to come to him and to seek him, but as people like you and I, who know the power of the name of Jesus Christ, that's who he's looking for. And that's where healing comes from. And I thank you for the opportunity to share. And it is my prayer that somebody on here tonight says something or does something that will send a healing throughout this land, not just the Elmira Corning area, but the entire nation. Amen. Thank you again for the opportunity.
Thank you so much, Pastor Thornton. And we'll come back. I'm hoping you're taking some notes because I sure am. We want to certainly ask Pastor Thornton some questions because that was a whole lot of stuff that we've got to do in order to heal. And we want to understand if I can't do but two or three of those things, not all four or five of those things, am I still going to be healed? Let's go to uh, Pastor Mann now from the Faith Temple Church of God in Christ in Elmira, New York. And we'll come back with some questions later on. Pastor Mann. God bless you all. Thank you so much. Um, as already been stated to uh, Mother Verdi and to the NAACP, um, to all of the state and local officials, and of course to uh, colleagues of the faith, God bless you. Um, I'll try and keep my uh, preaching voice to a minimum, but when you talk about healing, you get a little bit excited. Um, but uh, I will say this, you know, when you look at the season um, that we're in and you talk about healing and, and, and the steps for healing, um, there are things that we must understand. If you look in the Bible, um, there are ways um, that God healing is produced in this land. Um, it is interesting because we look at the first one, which is grace and grace we have no control over. Um, but there are other things that we actually have control over that are laid out in the Bible. Um, there are numerous, it says, you know, where two or three are gathered together, Jesus will be in the midst. Um, calling on the name of Jesus brings about healing. Calling for the elders um, when those who are sick, right? Lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. And then this is where we leads to, uh, we see the nature where uh, this, this virus has us right now where now people are afraid to lay hands on one another. Um, but the, the, the interesting thing about that is now we're looking at an atmosphere that needs, needs to be here. We need Jesus to speak to the atmosphere um, to heal this land, um, um, to remove you know, this, this coronavirus. And, and I'm reminded um, of the disciples who were on the board of the ship and the storm came and, and Jesus was in the, in, the, in the bottom of the ship sleeping and they went down there and they said, of oh, master cares now that now that that we perish and he spoke to the winds and the seas um and it said that they come and he said peace be still the interesting thing about that is that um what we must understand is where the the disciples got in trouble these were trained fishermen um and they waited until the storm was almost to the point of their death the first thing we have to stop doing is depending on our own knowledge depending on our own resources the bible says in all thy ways acknowledge him and he shall direct thy path um mm -hmm. We, we, we missed the revelation as they did. You know, if Jesus is asleep on the board, um, if Jesus is down there asleep, it, should, it couldn't have been that bad if Jesus was asleep. Um, we cannot have the church panic in this season. Um, we have to continue to present ourselves um, as, as a pillar of unity. Um, and, and, and it was interesting because, you know, even though Jesus healed, what, 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 what we have to not do and what they did, they waited until they were almost dying to go look for Jesus. And this is what we cannot tell. We have to tell the people, don't wait until you are about to die to go look for Jesus. Um, Jesus has, to, has the ability to bring about peace, not just healing, not just to our souls, but he has the ability to bring about a healing to this, this coronavirus that no, none of us sees, but we know that God sees it. Um, another thing I'll say as, in, in my closing is that we must fight. Um, this is not something we cannot sit back and just wait for this to happen. No, we got to fight. We have to take action. Um, when you think about the, the woman with the issue of blood, um, she fought, you know, she went to all the doctors in the Bible even says she ran out of all of her money, but she fought, she fought through the crowd just to get a touch um, of his garment. And, and, and because of, uh, uh, of her faith, she was made whole. Um, I believe in this season that, that, that if we want God's healing, um, not just in our mortal body, but for this atmosphere, we have to seek after God. As, we have to seek after Jesus as never before. And also, also, we must make sure, as I stated in the beginning, that we understand the biblical principles of how God releases power, le releases healing into the atmosphere. Um, we must seek God while he may be found, call upon him while he is near. And we believe that God is not slack concerning his promise and he will heal not just because he has the ability to heal, but because his deity demands that he is a healer. Um, I thank you for this time. I'm the one that wrote preach, Pastor Man, in the comments. Uh, we appreciate you, my brother. Uh, we are now turning to, and again, I, I hope you're taking notes because the questions ought to just roll tonight. We're turning to Pastor Nathaniel Wright from the Calvary Baptist Church. Pastor Wright. Uh, of course, we want to uh, 
thank uh, President Verdier and uh, I, I don't, and, and all of the NAACP, uh, I don't um, necessarily know how, how, I, uh, how I fit with, with all of these other uh, higher tier preachers, but uh, here I am. Uh, I'll, I'll just throw, uh, throw throw my little bit, uh, throw my little bit out here. I I, I do think that um, it's vitally important uh, that we consider um, one one of the things Jesus would al often say um, when it when it came to someone who who came asking for something uh, is, "What do you want me to do?" Um, and yes. uh, so, sometimes when I, when I, when you read scripture, a blind man will come to Jesus and Jesus say, Hey, you know, what do you want from me? Right. And it's kind of obvious. Well, I'm blind, man. I, I, I need, I need you to restore my sight. Uh, but it, it is rare. Rare is the occasion in which Jesus was active uh, without some acknowledgement of what was wrong. Right. So I, I think that one of the things that we, we have to consider is, as we think about healing and all of the work that must come before healing can take place and, and, and a starting point, one of, the, one of the hardest aspects about where we find ourselves uh, is there is so much that needs to be healed, right? Uh, there, there is so much going on. Um, so so our, our activity uh, has to be focused in on mm -hmm. certain things. Uh, and so the joy and the excitement of that for me is ultimately, since no one person can do everything, we all can do something. If, 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 if the, one, of the, one of the challenges that this pandemic has presented is when I can't do what I wanna do, I have to do what I can do, right? It, it becomes uh, important for us to identify the areas because even after, you know, three weeks after election, um, there is still, it, it, problems aren't over, regardless of political affiliation. Right, it, 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 there is still a Voting Rights Act that needs to 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 be empowered and voted on by the Senate. There is still voter, uh, you know, registration uh, and and disenfranchisement happening in Georgia. There is still all of these things that are still occurring, and healing cannot simply mean kumbaya. Let's pretend like ain't nothing wrong, right? It it it, it is if I have to compromise in a way that what is near and dear to me, what is near and dear to, to the safety and health of community and those around, that's not healing. That's just, that's some sort of fantasy, right? And so for many of us, um, you know, it, it is taking to heart the, the very questions that Jesus would ask every time healing was needed. Do you wanna be made well? What do you want me to do? Uh, so, that, so that they would have some ownership to what uh, uh, what they wanted Christ to do. And so as we think about kind of healing in a, as community and as a nation, uh, it is vitally important that we recognize the uh, the work of, of, of identification. The last thing that I'll say is, um, while I while certainly I believe in the uh, uh, in the in the centrality of Christ, um, the 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 one of the things that, that always amazed me in scripture is, how the how the non-believers were blessed because of the believers, right? That 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 people who were outside of what those who of us within Christendom would say the ark of safety uh, would be blessed and benefit from the fact that there were believers attached and around, right? And so because uh, we are living out our, our our purpose, it can it can be. It could be all of those things, and so so our work, if you if you identify as Christian, our work is to work that work, to have faith and work, so that those in community can also be benefit can be benefits be, beneficiaries of all that uh, all that we are trying to accomplish. Thank you so much, Pastor Wright. We appreciate it, man, brother. We're going to now hear from the Reverend Gerald Glover, pastor of the Resurrection Tabernacle Church. And please, I, by all means, if you've got that question already, you can certainly type it in the chat. We've got someone watching the chat box, so we'll have those questions ready to go. I have my own list, but how about you inject a question uh, so that we'll have that ready to go. Pastor Glover, go right ahead, sir. Good evening, everyone. I, uh, I'm listening attentively, and I am making notes. So... But I believe that healing is a continual thing according to all circumstances and situations that arise. 
whether we like it or not, everything is interconnected. I'd like to quote Martin Luther King when he said, all men are caught in an inescapable network of mutuality tied in a single garment of destiny. Whatever affects one directly affects all indirectly, close quote. I believe in healing. I have seen the healings, but I've heard different types of healings. So, but we need to define which one we're going to work on first. Like uh, all the brothers said, and my sister, that we can't do everything. You know, are we working on cures, uh, restoring soundness, healing the sick, moral and spiritual healing, like I heard this evening? I believe that most Christians are wounded warriors, but yet the battle is not ours, it's the Lord, and we're allowed to walk in the victory of our Lord Jesus Christ. It's been said that emotions that can break your heart is sometimes the very ones that heal it. So if we're determined to be part of this healing, as I've heard prior to this, we must identify, recognize, and admit the detriment to our health and everyone else's have a plan of action and set that goal. When I was approached by the subject, I said to the person that introduced it to me that I thought that we should wait until the president elect was in office so I could find out what he was talking about and then go on uh, from that. You know, uh, when we went to school, you heard the Pledge of Allegiance where it said one nation under God indivisible with liberty and justice for all, however, we know that that is not for all. I believe in healing, but I think healing must first start in the house of God. I've heard that scripture a number of times and, and Pastor Thornton is right. There isn't a pastor that hasn't read it or preached it, if my people who are called by my name. We pray, most of us pray day and night for the Bible says that we, that we should never cease from praying, but have we humbled ourselves? As she said, come down from our lofty heights. You know, it's a terrible thing to walk into the house, the Bible said, and take the high seat and someone better than you comes in and drags you down, so, you know? Uh, and then uh, we do pray, but do we seek the face of God? The translation of the face of God is the presence of God. It's a terrible thing that God is there in the presence of the Holy Spirit, and we don't even know that he is there. Uh, we must not walk by feelings. We have to continue to walk by faith. And turning from our wicked ways, the good, the evil, the unpleasant, the disagreeable, the troublesome, and the course of life that we have taken that may not be moral in the sight of God. Once we achieve this, then, as been said, we will hear from heaven. He forgive our sins and heal our land. He'll cure it, repair it, and take care of the hurt of all the nations. We're in this land. And never forget that he's the God that owns this world. That's who he is. We are servants of an almighty God. And unity must be achieved before we can move ahead as the army of the Lord. We are all one, but yet in the body of Christ. I have hope that all of this can be achieved as we, as we together as a, I heard a song that said, come together. And it said, take the trust out of man's hands and put it in God's hands. Mountains can be moved. Are we ready to do it? I say yes, for hope is not gone. We can no longer band-aid situations if we desire healing. We need to seek out the cause and then administer the cure. Let me tell you a short story from seminary. A professor said that you're standing in the seminary door and a man comes from around the corner and his forehead is bleeding. He said, what are you going to do? And most everyone said, we're going to take him inside, clean the wound, <laughs> praise God, bandage it up, pray with him and send him on his merry way. But yet every five to 10 minutes, somebody came around the corner bleeding from the forehead and what do we do? Take him inside, clean the wound, put a bandage on him, pray with him, and send him along his way. And the professor said, does it ever strike anybody to go around the corner and take the bat out of the devil's hand? Amen. These are the things that we need to do. 
when it comes to, to, to the Lord's uh, work. You know, we, we see it, we put a Band-Aid on it, but we did not get to, to the cause. So this is what I am saying today. There is healing. And when we're going to get healing, even if it's physical healing, we need to stop praying if it be thy will. It is God's will that we heal. But we have got to come together. We have got to come together as leaders here in Elmira or we can forget it. You know, 1 Peter 4 and 17 says, for the time has come that judgment must begin at the house of God. That word translated from the Greek means condemnation of the wrong, the decision whether severe or mild, which one passes on with the faults of others. If we leaders don't get it right, we can't expect our congregations to get it right. I thank you for this opportunity to speak to you. And again, and I am grateful to God for what he has done. And again, Mother Verdier, thank you so much. And I thank the NAACP. It's up to us preachers. It's up to us. We may be separated by denominations, but there's only one God who is above all, in all, and through all. God bless. Amen. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you so much, Pastor Glover. You, you, you were going about to take us on out of here, but we appreciate <laughs> those words uh, that you certainly so eloquently stated. We're going to now turn to uh, Reverend Constance Seifert from the First United Methodist Church to hear her remarks around uh, healing and this time to heal. Pastor Seifert? Seifert no, we're, we're getting ready to... Um... We're entering the season of Advent, and um, most of our discussions have revolved around how are we going to make Christmas happen on Zoom, and because uh, our building is still closed. Um, and here's my proposal, and it's about healing. Jesus was born in a manger, and we try to make it this hallmark card scene. But it was a cold, I mean, it was a, a birth and a baby. It was hard work. And um, Mary gave birth to that little bundle of life. And that bundle of life was hope, God's hope, born into a hurting world. And I just, I don't know, thinking about a baby Think of a newborn baby and how when they smile, it lights up the whole world and it just pulls you in to that love in a way that nothing else can. And I think sometimes we as adults, we try to, I don't know, we try to have all the answers that we don't really have because I, I must confess I've got a lot of dead ends of healing in my life. I've got family members I can no longer have a discussion with. I have friends that we can no longer sit down at a table together. And I don't know, I don't have those answers, but I trust that God does. Because every time I see a baby, a newborn baby, that hope is alive and lighting up the world. And just one story from my family, there's a rift in my family. My sister-in-law, when my brother died, stopped speaking to us and it was years. And when my father died, she came to his funeral and she refused to sit with the family. But when we were at the graveside, she was standing there by herself and I just walked over to her and I gave her the biggest hug I could give her. And I didn't say a word and it didn't heal everything because we still aren't talking to each other, but she knows we're together. We are together in God's love and God's healing can transcend a whole lot of our differences, but we Amen. do have to cooperate but I think we need to look at the children and watch how they just connect so naturally 
And just every time you see a baby smile, just think that is God's healing love. And it's here and it's lighting the world and whose heart doesn't melt. So when we celebrate Christmas to celebrate the birth of that little bundle of hope that was sent to help a hurting world. End of sermon. You, you preached it, uh, Pastor, <laughs> Pastor Constance. You, you really did. Certainly, we appreciate that story and, and, and that, that transparency. We want to now hear from uh, Reverend Holly Strickland from the um, Webb Mills UMC Church in Pine City. Pastor Holly? Thank you. Good evening, everyone. Good evening, and it's a wonderful opportunity to be with you this evening and share on this very important topic. I'd like to begin with a prayer of healing that I have been praying for quite a while now, especially uh, since the beginning of the year. And I ask Father God, come, come to us because the people of this nation and everything in it belongs to you. We are not here by accident. We are here because you are the one who set us in this nation at this particular time for the glory of your name mm -hmm. for such a time as this. I also pray, Father, people in this country are turning against each other. We no longer live like brothers and sisters. Brother turns against brother, sister turns against sister, parent and child against each other. But as was mentioned earlier in the scripture, but your word says that if we humble ourselves and turn from our wicked ways, you will heal our land. So I ask Lord to heal our hearts and heal our land, to remove bitterness and resentment from our hearts and help us to live as brothers and sisters, in Jesus' name, amen. Mother Teresa has a quote that spoke to me as I was working on this uh, reflection. And she says, quote, in the silence of the heart, God speaks. If you face God in prayer and silence, God will speak to you, end of quote. In healing yourself, you are also helping to heal others. When we take the time and the compassion to heal others, we're also taking the time and the compassion to heal ourselves. Second Kings chapter 20, verse five tells us, this is what the Lord, the God of your father, David says, I have heard your prayer and seen your tears. I will heal you. So as the spiritual goes, have a little talk with Jesus. Tell him all about your troubles. Amen. <laughs> His word promises healing. We all suffer with loss and grief as a part of our lives, but we also have the choice to allow renewal and healing to emerge from loss. We have a choice. When we do allow renewal and healing, it is joined with deeply felt gratitude for our ability to step forward, to keep going. So much has happened this year that involves grief, loss, and uncertainty. We each have our stories about the paths we have had to take and travel during this pandemic during social injustice and political unrest. Healing is a choice we make after loss. Being willing to engage in life is scary after loss, after grief, and after radical change. Part of the healing process starts with knowing that you have people and a community and things to be grateful for each and every day. Reflect on your loss, whether it is loss in your family, loss of job, or loss in an election. Lament about it. Things have happened. We can't just sweep them under the rug and pretend 
like it didn't happen or it is not around us. But as we be, uh, lament about it and make a choice, we can look at the world with a sense of gratefulness. So look around you, see how you can help engage in the world and community again with someone else. We are not alone. We continue to be a part of God's beloved community and creation. Allow time to feel the presence of God around you. Make a choice to engage in the world again. Reconnect with others. Look at others with a deeper sense of humanity. This will be a part of the healing process. We are alike more than we are different. Mm. Take it one day at a time. Share your joy and your gratitude with those around you and soak it up when others share their joy with you. Create a cycle of living that is forgiving, healthy, and positive. Isaiah chapter four, verse 10 reminds us, do not fear for I am with you. Do not be dismayed for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. We can do this. We can rebuild and renew the hope and future of our country. We can do it together as a community and with God as our guide. Again, I thank you for this opportunity to be a part of this moment. Thank you so much, Pastor Holly. Uh, with that, I'm gonna ask and see if Pastor Cook has joined us. Has he joined us? I don't see him. I want to make sure I don't overlook him. Not hearing him. Let's do this. Let's let's see first. Uh, are there some questions that have been queued up? If not, I've got a question for each of our panelists to try to expand upon some of the, the good things that they've already talked about. Um, let me start by asking this question. I'm going to just ask Pastor Thornton and Pastor Wright if you would comment on this particular question. And the question is, we've talked about healing. We've gotten a given a lot of scriptures. We've got given a lot of information. Pastor Thornton, you named so many things that it takes to, to heal. I don't know if I can do all of that. You, you talked about repenting and being humble and, 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 and praying. And my God, can you do two out of three? Talk to me about healing as it relates to some of those things, perhaps not all of those things. And can we still get there from there? Amen. Thank you for the question, Pastor Oliver. Very good question. There was a lot of things that was put into that verse, but I would say the most first, the most important thing is to seek God. It says seek his face because we're told in the 11th chapter of the book of Hebrew that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Mm -hmm. So if you seek him, the rest of it will fall in order because I don't know of anybody who's been searching for Christ and have not found him. He is a rewarder. So if you don't feel like you can turn and repent at this time when you connect with this risen savior he'll allow his holy spirit to fill you and to help you to do those things that will bring about the healing and thank you for the question so, so pastor right if you would elaborate just a little bit more on that and you talked about uh this concept of all of us doing something can you can you can you bring it right home and share with this audience what is that thing that you are perhaps doing so, so I think that the, 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 the something that, that each of us can do, right? So, so right now, you know, doing, in addition to just basic voter registration stuff, uh, even though election is over, right? Uh, very basic staying engaged at this point, one of the ways that we are trying to uh, heal is to make sure that we're still connecting, right? And in this, in this time of pandemic and zooming everything it is vitally important that you are intentional about the relationships that you have um i heard reverend county and and just just i i just loved her transparency and her heart in terms of look, i still got some stuff broken right i think that figuring out how to talk to one another again how to we can't rebuild our political system if there is no compromise right uh, if, if there is no 
uh, if, if there is no uh, working between Democrats and Republicans, this this thing just doesn't work, right? Uh, and so figuring out how to how to communicate with one another recognizing that we can have differences of opinion, that we can be different uh, uh, and still know that we are working towards a common goal. There was a point, I think, in which we can, we can destination was never the argument, right? It was always the route, right? We always knew we wanted to be something, right? We wanted to figure out how to be a more perfect union or you wanted to figure out how, uh, how we were going to expand the franchise. Um, so we never, so getting back to a common destination and then compromising, figuring out how, how we get there from there. Thank you so much, Pastor Wright. Well, I, I'm gonna just put it out there because Pastor Mann, you said it, you talked about fighting. Uh, you, 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 and, and we've been hearing now that the election is over. Uh, there are some folks who are upset and they wanna fight. Can you talk to us so that we get the clear understanding and don't walk away from the call, phone call uh, from the Zoom meeting tonight thinking that we want to put up our dukes and fight. But can you talk to us about this, this thing about fighting and how do we fight and what the Bible says about revenge? Because there are some who are seeking revenge at this particular point, given the results of this year's election. Talk to us about fighting and revenge and how does all that play out uh, as sure. we think for healing. Sure, sure. Thank you so much. Yes, it is. Um, we have to understand that this road to our healing, it is an action word. And, and we have to understand why do we have to fight? Because we have an adversary. We have someone who wants to keep us at odds. He wants to keep us separated. You know, a house that is divided amongst itself cannot stand. The Bible talks about vengeance. Vengeance is mine, saith the Lord, right? He talks about bridling our tongue, right? We have to, we have to really fight, not only <laughs> fighting to connection, but fighting is an internal battle of not going off of my own emo emotions, but what is the spirit of the Lord telling me to do, right? We must, we must be slow to speak. The Bible says that we must be, we must be uh, quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to anger. Um, and these are the actions and, and, and this is a, that is a fight. You know, when I have something to say, when you disagree with me and, and our political views um, may have, have, have put us on separate sides and, and, and there's the issue right there. Um, when we are, we are called um, to display the love of Jesus Christ. Jesus did not come to appease the Pharisees or the Sadducees, right? The church should not be here to appease the, the, the Republicans or the Democrats, right? We're here to bring about unity. You see what I'm saying? Because the Bible says that we know how to be angry and sin not. Yeah. So, and, and, and we must understand that, that, that this is an intentional uh, battle. It's not just going to happen. We're not gonna just say kumbaya, no, because, because we all must admit this was a brutal election. It was brutal. Um, and 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 I and I and I feel like there there were things that that between relationships, but if we are if we are to be if we are to be intentional about our healing, if we are to do things, what Pastor Wright talked about, and 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 I and, and I'm I, this is this is what we must. I'm so passionate about this right now. Um, as a church, I believe even as a church leader within myself, we got to start back at the basics. Um, my pastoral teachings are about unity. Come on. They about they about love. They're about peace. Like if we can't come together, right? Unity is not going to start because President Elect uh, Biden said it's time for us to come together. I'm here to. We have unity starts in the church. You know, we display the, we display the unity, and again, it is a fight. We're going to have to fight against your political views and 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 to separate that from 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 my political views. And it's like, wait a second, we're supposed to display the love of Jesus. When I was growing up, they sing a song. I know the Bible is right and somebody else is wrong. Right. So so a lot of that, that huge foundation is really us getting back to the Bible. But when we're talking about fighting, there is an intentional uh, 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 effort that we must make. We have an adversary. We have an enemy who wants to keep us separated. And so we must learn to listen to one another. I don't have to agree with everything you say, but I don't have to be disagreeable, right? We, we, yes, we, can, we can learn to listen to one another and, and it's gonna take an effort not only to fight against the enemy, but to fight even, even certain things within myself. I'm not always right, come on, you know, and I'm not always the victim either. Right. Very good, sir. We appreciate Pastor that. Pastor Oliver. Uh, we, we've got that fighting straightened out. Uh, was that Pastor Wright? Yeah, just, let me just throw this in here real, real quick. I, 30, I think, I think that, 
Yes, absolutely. I, I think absolutely right. To be able to listen, to get to a space, it, it is gestures like Senator O'Mara joining in, listening to a dialogue. It is it is those types of efforts that that are able to bring unity in a way. And so so thank you, Senator O'Mara, uh, just for extending yourself uh, in, in such a way as, as a sign of potential unity. Thank you. Thank you so much. That's excellent. Thank you so much for adding that, that comment, Pastor Wright. Uh, let me ask Pastor Glover, because he talked about that continuum. The, uh, th this, this thing that we're on, this healing journey is a continuum. Pastor Glover, can you just give us a little bit more? Uh, are there some other steps or some phases to that continuum of healing that you spoke about? And, and then uh, what, what, what does coming together really look like for you, Pastor Glover? Well, coming together to me looks like black and white, green, blue, whatever it is. If you read your Bible, we all were made from one blood, one blood. Uh, unity is a terrific word that's thrown around, but rarely seen. Uh, you know, and, and it hurts my heart to uh, see that there's no unification, and even the Bible speaks about that. For us to, I heard about fighting, uh, fighting a uh, uh, pastor man, that's true. But you know, the Bible tells us to seek ye first the kingdom of God and all of his righteousness. So we must fight the good fight of faith. You know what? If two Christians come together, if two or three come together in the name of Jesus and start praying earnestly about something, God has to answer it or else he's a liar. He said that, he, that Jesus would be there in the midst of it all. And, and this, is, this is what it's uh, about. You know, I think it all starts in the church. I don't preach to excite. I preach to incite people to action. It's like uh, I'm a father and these, most of these women are mothers. But the thing is, I trained my children at home so when they got out into the streets, they knew how to act. Training must be in the church. A preaching is for the unsaved. Teaching is for the saved folk. None of us went on a job and we may have known what to do from a previous job, but we had to learn to do it their way and we must learn to do it God's way. This is the only way it, it, it's going to happen. Unity is right there, right there. All we have to do has been said, walk into it, walk into it. We need not be afraid. Do you know why when the Bible speaks of the armor of God, why there's nothing behind you? Because God's got your back. And this I believe earnestly, earnestly. You know, I remember when I first came to this town, after six months, I was leaving. I was treated like a heretic. Uh, some guy that came to take members from other churches. Let me tell you something. There's enough sinners out there to fill every church. But the thing is, we've got to go where they are. We've got to go where they are. And some of us are equipped to do that. I once told somebody, I will not stand on the corner to preach. And then someone said, oh, pastor, this was in Brooklyn. Oh, I'll be, I'll be there to hear you Saturday preaching on the street. I said, excuse me? They said, oh, yes, I, I saw the poster with your name on it. So first of all, I learned not to tell God what I'm not going to do. Amen. We need to come together as preachers. Why don't preachers come together and pray? Why don't we have a prayer like this? Why don't we just come together once a week for half an hour or whatever? Well, how long did it take? And pray, pray earnestly. God yes, will answer our prayer. I know that there are crazy people out there. But I'm crazy, and the rest of us might be crazy for Jesus. Thank you and so, so much, while Pastor they Glover. act out, I act in, and then yes, God sir. will come out, and everything yes. will be all right. The songwriter yes, said, I believe everything will be all right. The second verse says, the Holy Ghost told me everything's going to be, be all right. right. Yes, sir. We appreciate that, Pastor Governor. Thank you so much for that ad. Uh, Pastor Connie. You moved me and touched my heart on tonight as you shared so transparently. And you said a powerful word. You used a four-letter word tonight, hope, H-O-P-E. You used a four-letter word. And there are lots of four-letter words that none of us use or want to use. But can you talk a little bit more about the hope and this being that thing that transcends differences? 
Well, it comes from God. It's all God's, because I can tell you, you, you keep talking about um, unity here and the people that, that have, the relationships that have broken down in my life are because the other person has become abusive and is telling me I am a liar and I do not know what I'm talking about. And there, I, some of these relationships are broken for good. I don't think they're going to be healed. And so the, but the healing, what I talked about with my sister-in-law in that moment when we hugged each other, that kind of healing, it didn't make everything better. We weren't united except in God's love. God's love is a... Um, I don't know. I I, I kind of don't have the same hope that I hear being talked about because I don't you see. Let's say try not to roll unity happening. Your bag on the floor because uh, that road is dirt and I don't want it to mess up. Uh, hi, Monica. I think you're 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 off mute, dear. Thank you. Go ahead, Pastor. Um. I think, but I think it can happen because I trust God. It's going to happen in God's time and in God's ways. And it's probably happening right before our eyes and we're not even seeing it. And so I have to trust that even though I can't feel that unity, it's, it's there. Somehow it's there because of the hope that God has for this world. The, the Bible verse that all is for God so loved the world. It's about, as long as we keep putting one foot in front of the other and trying to do as much as we can in love, with love, that's, that's the best we can do. And we may not, um, the hope, the hope with the capital H is, is a gift from God. And that's why I'm asking, celebrate Jesus' birthday. This is the birth of hope. For a hurting world and the hope brings healing but i don't think it I, I i don't see it bringing unity the way we're talking about it because i just see that there's um there's a chasm that i don't know that god's the only one that can fix it but i don't see it happening anytime soon mm. i think it's going to be in god's time and it's going to evolve and um Hopefully, I, so I do have hope, but I just, I also, I'm realistic. All right. Well, we do have, thank you so much for sharing, Pastor Seifert, that, that, that additional information around hope. Um, only God can do it. Only God can do it. I wish I could sing. I'd, I'd break out right now with that song. Uh, let, me, let me ask this question. I saw, I saw a question posted uh, by one of the viewers that talked about what, what more can the NAACP do with local, state, and national leaders to bring about healing? Um, anyone, one of the pastors can preach on that, or uh, Ms. Verdier, if you could even add some comments there around that question. What more can the NAACP do? I would love to. Right now, the NAACP is doing it. <laughs> this forum, uh, we we are reaching out on, uh, locally, na uh, statewide, and nationally, reaching the people um, on the on the state and national level. They are able to meet with many of the elected officials from the White House to the outhouse. So they are taking care of business on a higher plane and a higher level than we are. But in the communities, we are reaching out through dialogue, uh, developing, race, establishing relationships, because that's how you get things done. As somebody mentioned, the mayor is on, the, uh, Senator uh, O'Mara is on. You have to form relationships with your community. You have to have uh, names and faces and dialogue with people. If we are to move this mountain, we, and, and right now with COVID-19, bless it, because it is creating a forum for us. It has put us on pause so we can reach more people. Because if we were meeting in the community, some of these people who are on tonight probably wouldn't be there. So, so I, take, I, I take the blessings from God any way they come. We do what we can, where we can, and how we can. 
and we are, uh, uh, I was talking to uh, Schumer's representative a little while ago. He was asking me, what are we doing? And talked to me and he said, dang, your plate is full. We're doing all we know to do, but it's not just the NACP, it's all of you. See, uh, we have to we have to put this, these pieces together. It's a puzzle. Every piece has a place in the puzzle. The church has a, a numerous piece in this puzzle. That's why you're on tonight. The NAACP has a place. Every member in the community has a place. So we don't sit around and look at what is the NAACP doing. Ask yourself, what am I doing to make a difference in the world? And how can I help the NAACP? Or can I go to somebody's church and make a difference? We all need to get on board this train called change and help to make a difference. So we're doing everything we can do and finding ways to do it. But if anybody out there have any helpful suggestion, just send them to us. Believe me, we will put them in action. So we are doing everything we know to do with God's help. And I'll let somebody else uh, expound on that. Uh, uh, Pastor, can I, can I just right say, um, right and, and, and to man. what Mother uh, Verde is saying, these, this, that is correct. These type of platforms are, you know, steps at, at, um, at doing that. I think in this, in this climate, um, we also have to make sure that we are, we are educating uh, our people because I feel like, you know, we're fighting and, and, but you don't even know really what's going on. You know, you don't like me, but you don't even know me, you know? And so if you, you know, so it's, it's, it's cre educating each other to, to want to know what's going on. Not, not just, I mean, what's going on in the com community, regardless of, of images of who people are, are we educating people on, on, on what are the facts in our community? What what are the things that's facing our community? What are the what, what do you want to do? To, how can I help? Right? Um, it's just I I feel like a lot of things are going on, and, and what really brings about separation is ignorance, and I mean that from a sense of not knowing. Um, we're just going off of what somebody else said, or going off of what I what I saw on the, you know on the TV. And then the thing about it is, as we talk about. Like what uh, Sister Verdier said, what are we doing? Um, we have to stop allowing um, the people that God has put us over um, to be educated by uh, folks who don't have the spirit of God in them. Um, as, as a child, I can't allow my son um, to be to have his knowledge dictated by what he see on TV, by what he see on Facebook, by you know through through social media. Even in this age, we cannot allow this generation coming up um, to to make to make it seem like just because you are a Republican, then we then we don't like each other. That that's that's that we cannot do that. So we have to take it upon ourselves to make sure that those who God has put under our you know leadership. Um, and to, to be able to spread the word and to educate the people. The, the, the worst thing the enemy can come up against, that's an educated person who knows the Bible. That's the same thing against hate. The worst thing hate can come up against is somebody who's educated um, in what the facts are and where we are in life because it brings about that unity. I think we need to get back to educating our people. Thank, thank you so much, Pastor Man. Pastor Holly, let me just ask you, you you, you talked about and you said a prayer there that you've been praying. Um, my hope is that you can, one, share that prayer with uh, the NAACP and perhaps they can post that uh, as a follow on to this, this dialogue tonight uh, so that all of us can have that, pray that and, and embrace that prayer. But let me ask you uh, a, a question in, in that uh, you, you talked about that prayer of healing and that prayer for healing. Mm -hmm. What more can be done in addition to praying to get to the healing that we need? You talked about how we need to uh, embrace this pain and embrace this hurt. Can you share just a little bit more on how do we, sh how do we, how do we embrace it? Some of us are hurting. As a matter of fact, a question came in that says there are some families that are being ripped apart right now as a result of what's going on. Talk to us about that lament and healing that hurt, even within our families that have been ripped apart. Gladly. Um, as I shared, my main thing is using the word believe. We pray, we, we study God's promises, and we believe that what God says is what God does. 
So when God says that if we do humble ourselves, if we turn from our wicked ways, he will heal. And our role is to believe that. So when you reach out to a family member or uh, someone who may be seen as an adversary or someone who creates tension in the relationship, believe that you're showing the love of Jesus Christ and you're showing what Jesus has modeled for us to do will work. That it will overcome those feelings of hatred or bitterness or somebody getting on your last nerve as I like to say sometimes. But we need to believe that as we go through, as we realize we're hurting, we're upset, we're disappointed, we, we are suffering grief and loss, trust in God, trust in his word, and most of all, believe in God and believe in his word. Thank you, thank you so much for that. You, you mentioned in your uh, statements around, the, you mentioned a statement that says, we are more alike than different. Can you, can you help me? H how, how so? <laughs> I think my fellow clergy colleagues, when I say Imago Dei, we are all made in God's image. All, that doesn't mean the left side, that doesn't mean the right side, doesn't mean the blue side, the red side, whatever side you think that you need to be a part of. We are all made in God's image. So we are the same. We may present differently, our cultures may be different, our life stories and experiences may be different, but when all that gets peeled away, we have a heart put there by our Lord and Savior. And that heart is what keeps us the same. We are each other's brother and sister. We are family. We have a father, a heavenly father, who created each one of us. And God doesn't make mistakes. God doesn't make junk. So if he made someone mocha, if he made someone milk chocolate, if he made someone with a reddish tone, it is not a mistake. And that person or that group or that nation is still part of our family. And we need to, as I said earlier, treat each other with more humanity, more compassion, because the same feelings and emotions that we have over our, ourselves, our children, our grandchildren, our families, the other person also has those similar situations. So we are more alike than we are different. And what we need to do is focus more on that, focus on the likenesses that we share rather than how different we might look or how different we might act or what zip code we might live in. Thank you so much for that, Pastor Holly. You, you, you rounded that so well. Uh, we we're gonna give each of the preachers a minute to close, but I think you just took your two minutes to close. Let's go to Pastor uh, Seifert. Pastor Seifert, any closing words, any closing remark? Can you take a minute? Just give us some closing thought. Yes, I'm just gonna read what I wrote in chat. Yes, okay. With, with my human limitations, I support Black Lives Matter. I'm active in the poor people's campaign and work for living wages, healthcare, housing, saving the planet, reforming the justice system so that there is justice for all. I'm also part of the League of Women Voters, encouraging voting and educating voters. I act out of hope in the humble human ways that I can to support any and all people, places, and things that will make healing real. Thank you so much. Drop the mic right there. As we move to Pastor uh, Glover, would you share with us, Pastor Glover, one moment, uh, some closing thoughts? Well, I'm, I'm quite pleased uh, uh, this evening by uh, all that I heard, but I, I just hope that every week I press COVID to my congregation because people don't seem to be taking it too seriously. Uh, as I travel, I see nobody in masks, or very few in masks. We're all pulpiteers. We all take the Bible to the pulpit. And the only difference is our personalities. That, that's all it is. Love conquers all, even an enemy. We must love them. 
people despitefully try to use you, you need to pray for them. We can't change the world, but we can possibly change one person at a time. God bless you all. Amen, amen. Pastor Nathaniel Wright, one moment to close us out tonight with a thought. Yeah, uh, you know, I've just been privileged to be on with uh, such great uh, clergy and pastors uh, who do amazing work within community. Um, I am uh, as as cautiously optimistic as I as I am. I still uh, am hopeful uh, that God's uh, God's perfect plan, God's will, uh, and His purpose for our lives will come to pass. And so, just uh, always encourage folks to have faith and to work that faith. Amen. Amen. Have faith and work to faith. I like that, Pastor Kyle. Man, sir, would you help us out with a closing remark tonight? Sure. Thank you so much once again, Mother Verdier, and to all those who are on here. This is um, a phenomenal uh, platform, and I pray that this is something that continues to grow um, for this for our area. Um, I would say this is th that that my prayer is that in this season um, that we begin to turn the page on our language. Um, COVID has a voice. Um, civil unrest has a voice. Um, political issues has a voice. But where is the voice of God's healing? That God is a healer. Um, even when we look at the numbers, we have to recognize that God is healing more people than are dying from this virus. Um, and I believe it's time for us to continue to make known his deeds among the people. Um, and, and, and as we move forward um, to ensure that we are still lifting up um, God as a healer, we have to speak it um, so that the people can hear it. Thank you. Yes, thank you, sir. And last but certainly not least, one of the best preachers in the whole wide world, Pastor Lori Thornton. Would you share with us tonight in a closing thought? You got the wrong preacher, don't you? No, you're the one. You're the one. <laughs> thank you, everybody. I want to echo what the other preachers and pastors have said. Thank you for the opportunity to speak. And it is my prayer that something here has helped. Something here has begun to mend that crack that you feel in your heart. But I do want to just close with this scripture. It's Isaiah 57, 18 mm. and 19. I have seen their ways but I will heal them. I will guide them and restore comfort to Israel's mourners, creating praise on their lips. Peace, peace be to those far and near, says the Lord, and I will heal them. If you don't hear anything else, hear that God will heal. He is a healer. COVID has not restricted his power. It has not restricted his might. It has not dethroned him. God will heal. Just seek his face and he is a rewarder of those that diligently seek him. Once Great. again, thank you. Amen. Thank you so much, Pastor, Pastor Thornton. Uh, I believe that uh, Spencer and Sarah Carter said it best in thanking the NAACP and uh, thanking each of you for your, uh, your time tonight and for all the remarks that you've made. We hope that we've said something as a collective body that begins to uh, heal our land. Certainly, uh, as I stated when I started uh, today, our land needs to be healed. And I believe by uh, talking and speaking and praying and quoting scriptures and coming together tonight in this forum that the healing has begun. Let the healing continue. Ms. Verdier, back to you. Thank you so much for an opportunity to share on tonight. Thank you, um, Elder Bolivar. Um, thank you so much. You are such a dynamic uh, moderator. So if we are wearing you thin, just let us know, but that won't stop us. Uh, and, and to all the other people on, thank you so much. It has been a wonderful night. I said at the beginning, enough ministers on here to turn water to wine, and you just did. So thanks to all of you. Thanks to Senator O'Mara. Thanks to uh, 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 Mayor Bolin. And my cup is overflowing with gratitude tonight because one of my favorite Amen. scripture scriptures, if my people flow throughout this whole meeting, and that is a special scripture to me. So thank you for that. And there were some buzzwords. People said things like um, a smiling baby and things like uh, unity, hope, um, and uh, broken pieces. And one thing I'll never forget, Reverend Glover, you said, take the bat out of the devil's hand. You know, we didn't think about that. We're just cleaning up the blood. You said, take the bat out the devil's hand, then the blood will stop flowing. Thank you so much for all of that. And, uh, and Dr. King once said uh, that we have before us the glorious opportunity 
to inject a new dimension of love into the veins of civilization. And I'll say tonight, these pastors have provided us a full transfusion. So thank you so much. So we thank all the Amen. pastors to inject a new uh, dimension of love into the veins of civilization. Uh, may God bless you. And I just want to say before I turn it out to uh, Reverend Oliver, uh, uh, all, all of the close, uh, we might have some in, in, uh, events coming up. We're thinking of doing a Kwanzaa and somebody suggested do uh, a family Kwanzaa where each principal, we have seven, a family will take one. If we can get that done, we will do that. And that is in December. And we are planning to do a Martin Luther King program in November. So stay tuned. I mean, in um, January, I'm sorry. So stay tuned. We'll keep you informed. So thank you so much. May God bless you and keep you. Stay safe. Wear your mask. Uh, be obedient to man's uh, uh, directions as well as God. So if we do, we might be healthier people. So thank you again. And Reverend Oliver, it's all in your hands. Thank you, thank you so much, President Bernie. We certainly uh, appreciate those remarks and comments and announcements. Keep those in mind. All of us who are on the Zoom tonight, we're going to ask uh, Pastor Winters if she would offer now the closing prayer. What I'd like to do is start with a few moments of silence, just to absorb all that we have heard tonight. And then I'd like to share some words from Howard Thurman. In the stillness of the quiet, if we listen, we can hear the whisper of the heart giving strength to weakness, courage to fear, hope to despair. So I'd also encourage uh, spending time in silence, which we do very little of, I think, sometimes. So may we all go forth from this time in strength, courage, and hope, seeking relationship and facilitating healing, knowing that as we do so, the Lord goes with us. Amen, amen. and amen. 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 Man, this has been great tonight. God bless you all. Amen. Have a great day. God Thank bless you, you all. all. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Bye, everybody. Stay well, be healthy, <laughs> and love you. <laughs>